Hello and welcome to the WISIS Forum 2019. We are celebrating 10 years of successful implementation and 10 years of our cooperation and partnership at the WISIS Forum this week. We are joined by our high-level track facilitators who facilitated the 14 high-level policy sessions during WISIS Forum. I'd like to introduce you to Nayala, who is a practicing uh, doctor, and uh, she had some very interesting conversations about e-health and ICT applications in her session. Yes, uh, so my session was uh, session 14, and it was on uh, e-learning and media, um, and we had a very exciting panel, uh, lots of discussions about, about emerging trends and um, new ideas. They, there was a lot of emphasis on access, capacity building, and um, co collaboration. Uh, and through the panel, we met many of the uh, sustainable development goal, uh, objective achievement possibilities. So all in all, it was a very uh, informative session. Thank you very much, Nayala. Uh, we had a very interesting session on uh, digital trade and uh, uh, basically e-business. Uh, Ted, our young entrepreneur from Singapore uh, who has a startup of his own, uh, he moderated that session. Ted, so what are your takeaways? So yeah, for my session, Digital Economy and Trade, um, I was very surprised that we can actually learn a lot from the emerging countries. Um, for example, they're already full well on board on the digital economy through e-commerce. But more interestingly, um, they are implementing e-services in their country, but in a much more cost-effective manner compared to the developed countries. Thank you very much, Tred. So coming up with solutions to manage with limited resources. Uh, I have here with me Tim Unwin, who moderated the gender mainstreaming session. Tim has been with the WISIS process since its inception. Uh, so Tim, what was different this year and how was your session? I, I've been there that long, I'm a year older, but I think the, the session was really about gender mainstream and how we can reduce gender digital inequality. And I think one of the most shocking things was that in many countries, things are actually getting worse. Women are becoming more marginalized through the use of technology. So I had a great panel who came up with all sorts of suggestions about what we need to do about that. And two of the main conclusions were, I think that we need to work more together collaboratively in partnerships such as Equals Partnership, led by the new director of BDT, but also work more collaborative together. And I think for me, one of the best things was meeting these guys. I mean, as track facilitators, we've all got on incredibly well, and I've just learned so much from everybody else. And it's been a real privilege for a man to moderate the gender session. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, it, was, um, uh, it was our goal to reach 50-50 participation at the WISIS Forum, so we do hope we've achieved that this year. Uh, I have with me a new stakeholder, uh, Dr. Sway from University of Sheffield, and uh, she was moderating a very interesting session that came up with several emerging trends and several case studies were uh, showcased out there. So Sway, what were your key takeaways from there? Oh, it was a fascinating fashion, uh, session. I think what came through quite strongly is that although we have a lot of innovation right now happening, especially around e-health and AI in ICT services, there's still quite a lot to do because ICT services, it's, it's quite an integrated issue. So people were a little bit concerned about creating the right digital infrastructures, bridging digital divides, but also engaging citizens in those services. Thank you, Sway. Of course, um, engaging citizens is one of the most important thing in ICT services and applications because without those bottom-up approaches, you really can't uh, do much or implement much effectively. Um, I have here with me uh, Carl, who is from ISOC, and uh, ISOC is a great partner of the WISIS Forum. Carl, what were the key trends that you uh, captured during your session? Yeah, so my session was about inclusiveness and access to information and knowledge for all. And I think one of the main takeaways was that it's really a multifaceted challenge that spans both infrastructure but also the services on top. And in that regard, we looked at both uh, the conditions for people with disabilities, issues like local content and also digital literacy. I think what the main takeaway was that uh, it's important to have very clear uh, clearly spelled out plans with clear targets for what to achieve and also to uh, collaborate with local partners in achieving those goals. 
Thank you, Carl. It's a collaboration and partnership that emerges from most of the sessions that took place. And of course, collaboration is key to success. Uh, we have with us Sabrina. Uh, she is uh, doing some very important work in Switzerland uh, on uh, life skills. And uh, she's also introducing digital skills. So Sabrina, how was your session and uh, what were your key takeaways? I was very impressed by the fact that um, uh, African countries are very advanced in digital application and services. For example, uh, Kenya has implemented mobile pay payment at an, a very extensive stage. And we th I think, like my colleague, that we can learn a lot from the countries who have less means in order to include and, and create an internet which is inclusive. And application and services can definitely help to implement and achieve the SDGs. Thank you very much, Sabrina. So there were some very interesting um, examples, case examples from Africa and Asia and several other countries in Sabrina's uh, session. Uh, we have here with us also uh, Morten, uh, who had a very interesting session on cybersecurity. Uh, cybersecurity falls under the WISIS action line C5. Uh, so Morten, what were the challenges or you know technologies that were discussed during your session? Well, actually, it's quite interesting to look at the cybersecurity element. Two key angles came up. Cybersecurity in terms of um, security of systems, of data, so very much from an organizational perspective. And here really the, the combination of regula regulation without hindering innovation, uh, capacities within both the public and private sector to ensure uh, uh, ethical, safe, uh, transparent use of technology, so unbiased algorithms in AI, unbiased data, etc. But also from an end user perspective about common sense principles and informed use of technology and content and how training and personal responsibility really fits into that role. So you avoid fake media. On a technology trend, there's really been a move in the last 10 years from malware and sort of phishing and, and, and trying to, to avoid the, the princes of the world that have $10 billion if, for you if you give them your bank account number to, to more sort of malicious and illegitimate use of existing but very uh, common based technology. So the technology developments can really both be a solution to that but also pose a threat. So this is where regulation, common sense use, from both organizations, public, private, and the end user really comes into play. So there's a sense of responsibility and regulation here. Thank you, uh, Martin. Of course, the safe and ethical use of ICT is very, very important uh, uh, aspect that came out of your session. Uh, we'd like to move to our uh, next high-level track facilitator, who's uh, Jabu. And uh, uh, Jabu, what were the you know key takeaways? I heard so many case examples being shared in your session. Can you share something with us? I think uh, from my session, which uh, was on ethical dimensions uh, of information and knowledge societies, it was quite an interesting part, a session, particularly because it cuts across different types of technologies. And uh, the, the main things that were under discussion was that technology is uh, actually created to advance humanity. And because of that, the issues of ethics must not be left behind, particularly when we look at new emerging technologies like AI, drones, and, 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 and all the others. Uh, and I think uh, the other key aspect that the panelists raised was as we try and address the problems of ethics in current technologies, we also need to think about the future ethical dilemmas. And I think uh, many panelists also touched on the fact that you know, there are ethical principles that already exist, but the key issue is on implementation, so that needs to be speed up. Uh, particularly also regulations and uh, legislation from different nations needs to be put onto the fore. But uh, all in all, the, 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 the key was technology uh, is for human beings, not human beings for technology. That's a good summary, Jabu. Thank you very much. Uh, we had uh, world leaders from, uh, uh, from the private sector, civil society, governments, technical community, academia, participating with us here today uh, at the WISIS Forum uh, 2019. And uh, you heard that collaboration and partnership is the 
key essence that was coming out of all the sessions. Um, I'm also joined uh, uh, here uh, by our um, CEO of um, a company in Jamaica. Uh, and uh, Valeria, what was your uh, key takeaway? What was the key takeaway of your session? My key takeaway from my session was collaborate to innovate. The human element is critical. Human interoperability is key. So therefore, we need to focus on capacity building. And bridging the gap just doesn't mean access. It, it, it means education. And so that's a major thing that we ought to be paying attention to. Thank you, Valeria. Uh, capacity building, digital skills, and education, extremely important uh, for implementation of the VISIS outcomes. Um, we are also joined by uh, May, um, who moderated a very important session on enabling environment. And enabling environment, as we heard from everybody, um, innovation and regulation have to go hand in hand. So, May, uh, what were the key takeaways from your session? So, our recommendation is for an integrated framework, which is an innovation network for all regulatory agencies so they can learn from each other and spread the best examples. Thank you very much, May. This brings us at the end of our interview, and all the summaries by the high-level track facilitators are available online, and you can read them in depth, highlighting the case studies, the challenges, emerging trends that emerged from more than 14 sessions that took place during the VISIS Forum high-level track. Thank you very much, and have a good day.